Right, guys, welcome back to the... the false emperor! Right, that's enough from you. Uh, so, massive, massive thank you to Games Workshop for, of course, sending out Codex Chaos Knight. And Ian is excited, aren't you? Oh, that's Yeah, nice. and if you haven't guessed, that's not really Ian. Ian wanted to be here, uh, but unfortunately, he's away because of his birthday. Um, so, I'm going to be reviewing this, and Robot Ian uh, is going to be chipping in when he sees fit. <laughs> that makes now, sense. Now, <laughs> unfortunately, we're not going to have a game out immediately this morning. However, if you stay tuned to the channel, make sure you're subscribed. There will be an Imperial Knight versus Chaos Knight battle report within the next 24 hours. Uh, so, stay tuned for that. But, Ian is super excited about this book. Ooh. Finally... More stratagems, more warlord traits, more relics, more knights. So, like I said, a massive thank you to Games Workshop for sending this out. Uh, and there is some fantastic artwork and conversions of miniatures in here. Uh, there is, of course, the new Chaos Knight kit. Uh, but there's plenty of conversions and add-ons for the Armagers uh, and the Valiant and uh, Castellan uh, in here, which you can see coming up on the screen now. Now, if you haven't seen Ian's Knights before, they've been on the channel a few times, but they've also appeared on Winter's SEO. Uh, so go and check them out there, and of course, stay tuned for the battle report. But, let's get started with some of the rules for these guys that have, of course, been expanded, and I would say that now almost on par, if not possibly better, than Imperial Knights. Um, so, much like Imperial Knights, you've got two different types of detachments. You've got the Iron Class Household, or you've got the Infernal Household. Uh, essentially, it's only two households that you get access to, instead of the nine that's in the Imperial Knight one, I think. But if you run a detachment of Iron Class to Households, uh, if a model with this ambition made a charge move was charged, or performed a heroic intervention, add one to the model's attack characteristics until the end of the turn, and the armor penetration of any melee weapons the model is equipped with improve by one. That's massive. In addition, when an enemy unit fails a morale test whilst within 12 inches, any models with this ambition, one additional model flees. That's good. So suddenly... Your stamp and feet are at minus three, I think they are. Yeah, they'll become minus three when you charge, which is massive, massive, massive. And that's probably the better one. The other one is Infernal Household Ambition. At the start of your movement phase, each model with this ambition can use the Demonic Surge. If a model uses Demonic Surge, it suffers one mortal wound and you roll a D3 on the table to the right. To determine what rule applies until the end of your next movement, until the start of your next movement phase. When models use the demonic surge, you can choose which one you want, but you suffer D3 mortal wounds instead. And you can only use the demonic surge once per battle. I don't think this is as good despite the surges being decent. So on a one, you can add two inches to the model's move and add one to the advance and charge rolls. On a 2, you can add 1 to the target's toughness. That means you've got a toughness 9 knight. Uh, and select one range weapon uh, this model is equipped with. Add 1 to the weapon's strength, characteristic, and damage. That means that you can have a damage 3. Um, I forget the name of the, ca the, the cannon. The one's 12 shots, but a damage 3, that is... That's pretty decent, to be honest. Uh, but as a general one, I think the Iron Class Household Ambition is the better of them all. So, we'll have a look at the different knights of... Um, the different classes of the knights within the book. So, there is more, rather than just literally having one knight, um, which meant that you could only ever take a maximum of three match play games. They've broken them down further. You've also got access to Dread Blades as well, uh, which is essentially free blades, uh, and much of the same rules apply. So what you've got uh, is you've got your War Dog Knight, which is essentially your Armager, uh, or your Helverin. But it's one data slate, and it basically says um, that the model is equipped with a Heavy Stubble and a Thermal Spear uh, and a Reaper Chain Glaive, it may replace them 
with two War Dog Auto Cannons. All of the stats for the War Dog are absolutely identical to the Helverin and the Armager. They're all identical apart from the War Dog Auto Cannon now has the rule uh, that you don't suffer the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons, which means the War Dog um, Heavy Stubber does suffer it, unlike the Imperial version. Other than that, it's exactly the same, just slightly different keywords and stuff, obviously, for Chaos. The next thing that you've got is your Knight Despoiler. Now, everything is the same as a standard Knight chassis. Nothing's changed. None of the weapons have changed. Everything is absolutely identical. Apart from its one entry to build uh, the Knight the way that you want. So... As a base standard, they basically come with a heavy stubber, a reaper chain sword, and a thunderstrike gauntlet, and of course titanic feet. It says the model can additionally be equipped with one of the following: an iron storm missile pod, storm spear, or twin Icarus sword or cannon. The model can be equipped with one of the following instead of his thunderstrike gauntlet: avenger gatling cannon, and heavy flamer, rapid fire battle cannon, and heavy stubber, or thermal cannon. It then says that you can change the Reaper Chainsword for the same items and you can be equipped with a metal gun instead of a heavy stubber so you can still dual wield same weapons um, other than that everything else is, is exactly the same apart from it now has a specific entry called Engine of Destruction because you know Chaos Knights uh, that are built like Gallants should be able to do the same thing and they never could However, there is now an entry for this. If this model is equipped with one Reaper Chain Sword and one Thunderstrike Gauntlet, add one to its attack characteristic and improve its weapon skill characteristic by one. Yep, that's right. So it actually becomes the same as the uh, the Knight Gallant. Now, of course, if you run that with the Household to get an extra attack on the charge, suddenly that's six attacks on the charge. And if you're using Titanic Feet, that's at minus three. That is very, very good. That's nice. I like it a lot. Yep. Next up, we've got the Knight Tyrant, uh, which is basically um, the Castellan and the... Oh, I can't remember. The, the Valiant. Uh, much like the others, it basically says, the model can be equipped with one Conflagration Cannon and one Thunder Coil Harpoon instead of a Plasma Decimator and one Volcano Lance, and this model can be equipped with two Shield Breaker Missiles instead of one. Uh, instead of one Siege Breaker Cannon. So, it's literally one or the other, but the Knight Tyrant itself comes under one Data Slate, as opposed to having the two separate ones like you do uh, for the Imperial. Now, have you ever seen a Knight Preceptor? Probably not, because they're not that great. However, I think the Chaos version, which is the Knight Desecrator, is pretty decent. So, much like the Preceptor, he gives reroll hit rolls of a 1 for Questor Traitorus War Dog units whilst they're within 6. Very, very good for the auto cannons, of course. Other than that, everything else is identical. He's got a Thunderstrike Gauntlet or a Reaper Chainsword. However, he has a Laser Destructor instead of the, the Laser 1. Uh, it's range 60, heavy D3, strength 14, minus 4, and D6 damage. And if you make a wound roll of a 6+, it does D3 mortal wounds in addition. So I think he's actually okay. I don't think he's a bad shout at all. Um, you've got you know you've got that little bit of um, uh, range threat, and he's you know he's a knight in combat. He's not bad. Next up, though, you've got the Knight Rampager, and the Rampager is equipped with a Reaper Chainsword and a Thunderstrike Gauntlet. So this is your dedicated um, Gallant, essentially. Uh, it's got the five attacks in its profile, and it's got the weapon skill 2 plus as a standard uh, as well. But it's literally just, you know, it is that. Uh, however, it has Frenzied Rampage. And I like this one a lot, right? So bearing in mind you can get up to six attacks with this guy uh, and the feet become D th uh, minus three. And you get to make three hit rolls for each attack 
That's 18 attacks with the Titanic feat, right? When resolving an attack made with a Reaper Chainsaw or Thunderstrike Gauntlet, uh, by this model, any unmodified hit rolls of a 6 score 1 additional hit. So you got 6 attacks with one of them. You know, chances are you're probably going to get 1, possibly 2 hits if you're lucky. And it scores an additional hit, which is absolutely brutal. Yep, absolutely brutal indeed. That's all of the entries in the Codex, okay? There's not as many as the Imperial Knight Codex, but you do have the versatility of being able to customise one of those knights. Now, I'm not going to go through all of the stratagems and everything, okay? Because, if I'm honest, a lot of them are copy and paste from the Imperial Knight Codex. Um, I will run through them and name them, but I won't obviously describe what they are. Uh, we've got Ion Aegis, Rotate Ion Shields, Corrupted Heirlooms is the one for the extra relics, uh, Spiteful Demise um, is the 4 plus to explode, you've got Thunderstomp, Sky Reaper Protocols, you've got the Tyrannical Court, which is the one to make um, other knights your Warlords to give them Warlord traits, you've got Pack Dogs, which is for the uh, Warglaves to make charges, um, you've got Chain Sweep. Death Grip, which is for the um, Thunderstrike Gauntlet. Um, you've got Demonic Guidance System, which is the one to be able to shoot your Shield Breakers at characters. You've got Full Tilt, which is Run and Charge. Um, Devastating Reach. This is a new one, Titanic Duel. Use the stratagem at the start of the fight phase. Select one Chaos Knight model from your army that is within an inch of an enemy Titanic unit. Both players secretly choose a number between 1 and 3. Either write the number down or use a d6 that is hidden. The numbers are then revealed at the same time. If they differ, then until the end of that phase, add the number you choose to the attacks characteristic of that model. But attacks made by melee weapons by that model can only target titanic units. So basically, if you pick a 1, 2 or 3, as long as you don't match your opponents, you get that many additional attacks. Trial of Destruction is next. Use the stratagem whenever a Chaos model from your army fires Overwatch um, or is chosen to shoot or fight until the end of the phase. When resolving an attack made by that model, you can re-roll the hit roll. That's not bad. Uh, that's the one that um, was in the um, codec, uh, in the index. So it's nice that they've kept hold of that. Now you've got a couple of different ones for Iron Class Household. Uh, or Infernal Household, depending on which way you run. You've got four for each. Uh, break the enemy line is iron class only. Uh, select one enemy unit within one inch of an iron class household model from your army that made a charge move that turn. Until the end of that phase when resolving an attack made with a melee weapon by an iron class model uh, from your army against that unit, you can re-roll the hit rolls. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. That kind of makes it a little bit like House Crast. Uh, the next one that you've got is Vow of Carnage. Use this stratagem before the battle. One iron class household model from your army to declare a Vow of Carnage. And until the end of the battle, keep a tally of the enemy models destroyed as a result of attacks made by that model. Adding one to the model's attack characteristic for every ten models destroyed. That model cannot be selected for... Vow of Dominance or Vow of Beast Slayer stratagems, and you can only use this stratagem once per battle. You stick that on that um, the Gallant equivalent, so you've got six attacks on the charge, and then of course if you're using your feet and feet for that, you've got 18 attacks. For every 10 models you kill, you get an extra attack, and each attack gives you three more stomps. That's very, very good. Um, it makes clear and hordes a lot easier for knights. Uh, next up we've got Vow of Dominance. Use this stratagem before the battle. Uh, select an iron class household model from your army and declare the Vow of Dominance. Until the end of the battle when resolving an attack made with this model. Uh, an unmodified wound roll of a 1, 2 or 3 always fails. Irrespective of any abilities that the weapon or model making that attack may have. The model cannot be selected for the Vow of Carnage or Vow of the Beast Slayer stratagems. It's very similar to one of the Warlord traits for the Imperial Knights. It's very, very good if you're going against other big knights and stuff. Um, I think it's quite handy. 
You've got Vow of the Beast Slayer next. Uh, again, select one Iron Class model. Until the end of the battle when resolving an attack made by that model against an enemy unit that contains models with wounds characteristic of 8 or higher, you can reroll wound rolls of a 1. That's not bad. Um, we've then got four more left for the Infernal Household. Bind the souls of the defeated. Use this stratagem at the start of the fight phase. Select one Infernal Household model from your army. And until the end of that phase, when an enemy model is destroyed as a result of an attack made with a melee weapon by the selected model. Getting a mouthful of these, aren't they? Uh, roll 1d6 and on a 4+, plus, the selected model regains one lost wound. Each model can only regain up to six wounds as a result of the stratagem in this phase. That's pretty decent. Uh, and that's, of course, to represent the Demon Forgers uh, replenishing the strength of the Knights. Uh, the next one we've got, it's 3 CP for this one. Uh, I should have mentioned, actually, sorry, uh, Bind the Souls of the Defeated was 2 CP. Um, and Vow of Carnage was 1. Vow of Dominance was 2, and Vow of the Beast Slayer was 1. Uh, next up is Pact of the Dark Gods, 3 CP. Use this stratagem when an Infernal Household model from your army is destroyed, but did not explode. Roll 1d6 at the end of the phase, and on a 4+, plus, return that model to play with d3 wounds remaining, placing it as close as possible to its previous position, more than an inch away from the enemy models. Um... And you can't use it on the same model more than once per battle. So again, that's very, very similar. I think it's the House Tyrannus one. Um, so it's nice that they are kind of copying them. But at the same time, it does feel, with some of them, a little bit lazy. But I do like uh, the Vow of Dominance and the Vow of Carnage and stuff as well. I think they're pretty cool. Uh, Demonic Ammunition we've got next. Use this stratagem before the battle. Select one Chaos Knight detachment from your army. Uh, until the end of the battle, heavy stubbers um, equipped on any knight's models uh, in the detachment are equipped with have a strength characteristic of 5. So again, that's very similar to the um, Imperial one, but the Imperial one gives you minus 1 on your AP instead. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and then the last one, Diabolic Rift, is 2 CP. Use the stratagem at the start of your opponent's psychic phase until the end of the phase. When a psychic test is taken for enemy models that are within 12 of any Chaos Knight Infernal Household, uh, that enemy model suffers a Perils the Warp on any dice roll instead of a double one or a double six. I like it. I like that a lot. That's actually pretty cool. So, like I said earlier, we've also got the uh, Dreadblade Packs and Damnations. And very much like the free blades, you've got to roll 2d6 and roll less than your leadership uh, so that you aren't affected by the, the bad ones. Uh, relics, though. Uh, relics, I think there's some good ones, and I think there's some that's not great. Uh, the Blasphemous Engine, for example. Uh, a model with this relic is considered to have double the number of wounds remaining for the purposes of determining what roll to use on the damage table. So, again, you know, they took inspiration from Hawk Shroud for that. Uh, Veil of Medengard, um, Iron Class Household Model Only. A model with this relic has a 4 plus in vulnerable save against attacks made with ranged weapons. Cool. Uh, the Coordinate Target. Once per battle at the start of the fight phase, a model with the, the relic can activate it. When it does until the end of that phase, invulnerable saves cannot be made against attacks made with melee weapons by that model. Invulnerable saves cannot be made. For this model. That I think is massive. If you charge that 6 attack knight into Gilliman for example. He's gone. He can't take any invulnerable saves. And you know you're going to do some damage. It's a very very good trade off if you ask me. Especially if you've got a knight that's suffering. And is potentially going to die. Um, it's great to use that I think. We've got Zinchen Pyrothrone next. Uh, basically you can... Uh, become a Psyker and you gain Smite. That's pretty much it. But if you do Peril um, and die as a result of Perils, uh, your dual Plasma Core automatically explodes. So yeah. Helm of Warp Sight. And I think this is going to be on a lot of stuff. Um, Knight Rampage, uh, Knight Desecrator or Knight Despoiler only. 
When resolving attacks uh, made with a ranged weapon by a model with this relic, ignore hit roll modifiers. So you know them pesky Eldar flyers that are at minus two to hit because they're more than 12 inches away. Yeah, it's going to ignore that and just go bang, 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 bang straight into them. That's, that's going to be pretty tasty. Uh, and I think you'll see that a lot. Next up, we've got the Diamonus, um, model equipped with the Laser Destructor only. It replaces it. It's strength 16 instead of strength 14. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Uh, it does mean, of course, that you wound other knights on twos rather than threes. Uh, next up, we've got the Tyrant's Banner, which is a Rampager, Destructor, or Despoiler only. Uh, sorry, Desecrator. Whilst the model with this relic is within 6 inches of any friendly Chaos units, add 1 to their leadership. And at the start of the turn, if your army is battleforged and the model from your army with this relic is on the battlefield, roll a dice and on a 5 plus you regain 1 command point. So that's not bad. Uh, next up is the Teeth at Hunger, which replaces a Reaper Chainsword. It's strength plus 8 instead of strength plus 6. When the bearer fights, it makes 1 additional attack with this weapon. And at the end of the battle round in which no enemy models were destroyed as a result of attacks made with this weapon, roll a dice and on a one the bearer suffers a mortal wound. So, yeah. So next up we've got the Rune of Nak Tegra. Dreadblade model only, so you can only put this on your, on your Dreadblade. A model with this relic has a 5 plus invulnerable save against attacks made with ranged and melee weapons. The model gains one additional Dreadblade packed and one additional damnation of your choice. So, you know, it's not bad, but there is pros and cons to it. Uh, the Putrid Carapace of Nurgle. Uh, much like the, the Suffering Plate, basically, if you take any wounds with a melee weapon, um, if a saving throw is successful, roll 1d6 on a 4+. plus. Um, the model that attacks suffers one mortal wound. So it bounces straight back. You must like that, Ian. Yep, it does. Bound Viridian Psychogeist. Try saying that three times when you've had a, a drink. When resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon by a model with this relic and an unmodified wound roll of a six, the armor penetration characteristic of that weapon is improved by one uh, for that attack. So again, that's not a bad shout if uh, you've got lots of them uh, Avenger Gatling cannons. Uh, the Traitor's Mark. Whilst a model with uh, from your army with this relic is within 12 of any enemy units, subtract 1 from their leadership. Whilst a model from your army with this relic is within 6 of enemy models, subtract 2 from their leadership. Uh, next up we've got the Quicksilver Throne of Slanesh. When an advance or charge roll is made for a model with this relic, add 1 to the result. A model with this relic always fights first in the fight phase, even if they did not charge. If there are enemy units that have charge or that have a similar ability, then alternate choosing units to fight, starting with the player whose turn is taking place. And then finally, we've got the Gauntlet of Ascension, uh, which is basically a Thunderstrike Gauntlet. Uh, it's strength times 2, minus 4 and 6 damage. But when resolving an attack made with this weapon, you can re roll the to hit and to wound roll. Um, when a character model is destroyed as a result of an attack made with this weapon, add 1 to the bearer's strength characteristic and add 1 to the bearer's attack characteristic. Bearing in mind that if you go knights against knights, chances are people have used the stratagems to make them characters. So you know what, that's not bad because you don't even suffer the penalty to hit roll uh, on that either. Uh, and then we've got warlord traits. Uh, I don't think any of these are particularly great, but... You know, there's a couple of them that are okay. Uh, Infernal Quest. Um, basically, your Warlord counts as objective secured. Um, but unless... If, if someone has objective secured, he counts as 10 models. Uh, a Harbinger of Scrap Cord. Um, at the end of your movement phase, roll a d6 for each enemy vehicle unit within 6 of your, of your Warlord. And on a 4+, plus, they suffer one mortal wound. Uh, Knight Diabolus, add one to his attack characteristic. Uh, Warp Haunted Hull, uh, very, very similar to uh, the relic that you had earlier. Basically, he becomes a Psyker, uh, and when you lose a wound as a result of a mortal wound, or, uh, sorry, as a result of a mortal wound in the Psychic phase, on a 5+, plus, the wound is not lost. 
eager for the kill um, you get to add one to your run and charge rolls in addition add one to the warlord's attack characteristic whilst they're wholly within your opponent's deployment zone uh, and then aura of terror when a charge roll is made for this enemy when a charge roll is made for an enemy unit within 12 of this warlord subtract one from the result in addition when a morale test is taken for enemy units within 12 of this warlord your opponent rolls 2d6 discarding the lowest or either result if they are the same so that is pretty much the knight codex uh, however, you probably want to know points. Most of them are very, very similar to uh, the Imperial variants. Um, of course, the chassis are slightly different costed. So the chassis, the Knight Desecrator is 385 base. The Knight Despoiler is 285 base. Uh, the Knight Despoiler with one Reaper Chainsword and one Thunderstrike Gauntlet is 305. The Knight Rampager is 320. The Knight Tyrant is 500 base. And the War Dog is 160. Now, the Knight Tyrant, let's have a quick look at this. So, the. What weapons does he have? He has the Volcano Lance is 70, so that's 570 for him. And then we'll have the Plasma Decimator is 40, that's 610. And then shield breaker missile is 15 and the twin siege breaker counts 35 so 80 yeah so he's about 700 for the equivalent of the castellan as well um avenger gatlacan 85 heavy flamer 14 stubber 2 iron storm 16 the laser destructor is free um plasma decimator is 40 rapid fire battle cannon is 90 uh, Storm Spear is 45, Thermal Cannon is 55, uh, the War Dog Auto Cannons are 5, Thunderstrike Gauntlet is 35, and the Reaper Chainsword is 30. So, yes, I think there's a lot, a lot of flavour to be had out of this. I do like the rework of some of the stratagems and the Warlord traits. It is a shame that some of it is copy and paste, but at the same time, it's really good that Chaos players can now stand up to Imperial players. Uh, and to be honest, I love the idea of the extra attack uh, on the charge uh, from the household as well. So, a very, very cool codex. And once again, a massive thank you to Games Workshop for sending this out early. Stay tuned to the channel because me and Ian will be filming a battle report, Knights vs. Chaos Knights. And it's going to be absolutely awesome. And, uh, yeah... Blood for the blood god. Death to the false emperor!